Okay, in this section, we're going to be graphing ellipses. Now, in the notes uh, at the beginning, there's two different models for an ellipse opening up sideways and an ellipse opening up and down. There's some formulas that are given there uh, for that one, and so we're going to be applying that here. So if you haven't looked at those yet, uh, you should first have a look at those, uh, those diagrams first uh, before look, viewing uh, this example here. So assuming you've already done that already, let's go ahead and answer these questions. Now, the way it works here is your A value is always larger than your B value. You could have A and B equal to each other. In that case, you have a circle, but you're probably not going to find that in this section because we're going to be focusing mostly on uh, ellipses here. Ellipses are basically elongated circles. And so the A value is a larger one. Now, wherever you see the larger number, if it's underneath the X variable, that means it opens up sideways. If the larger number here appears underneath the Y, that means it opens up and down. So this particular one, since the 25 is underneath the x squared, that's the larger number there, that means that this is going to be an ellipse that opens up sideways. And this is important to know if it opens up or down or left and right because that's the direction we have to go with our a and b values. So what are a and b? Okay, well a is always the square root of the larger number. So in this case, a is the square root of 25, which is 5. The formula that's in the notes has this as a squared. So they're giving you this as a squared already, which means that's why you've got to take the square root to get 5. Likewise, the b is the square root of the smaller number. Square root of 9 is 3. So we have this. So now we have 5 and 3. Their formula for c that's given in the notes is this one. c is equal to the square root of a squared minus b squared. So we're going to do that with the information that's given here. We're going to do square root of 5 squared minus 3 squared. And for that, we get 25 minus 9, which is 16. So C is equal to uh, 4. The C value is used for eccentricity, and it's also used to find the foci. So let's start answering some of these questions based on what we have done so far. Now center, if you don't see any parentheses around the X and the Y, automatically the center is going to be uh, 0, 0. The vertices and the foci, we're going to wait and we're going to get those off the graph. We could use the formulas that's listed in the notes, but instead, I'm going to go ahead and get all the information off the graph itself. Okay, uh, the eccentricity, the formula for that from the notes is C over A. The C value is 4, A value is 5, and that's going to be 0.8. I talked about in the notes that eccentricity is a measurement of how close the ellipse resembles a circle. The closer you are to zero, that means the closer it looks like a circle. If you have E equals zero, that's a perfect circle, and it can go all the way up to one. So the farther you are away from the zero, the more narrower it's going to become. So because it's 0.8, we should see it's fairly narrow. It doesn't look so much like a, a circle. And the other examples that we'll do uh, in this section, we'll actually be comparing the decimal that we get, and you'll be able to see that uh, if it's a, a number closer to 1, it's more narrow. If it's closer to 0, it's more rounded. Okay, So it's 0.8 for this particular example. The major axis, the formula for that, is 2 times a. So in this case, I have 2 times 5, which is 10. The minor axis, this is the length of the minor axis, uh, would be 2 times b. So 2 times 3 is going to be 6. And also, basically, the major axis is, a, is the length from one end, from one of vertices all the way to the other vertice. And then the minor axis is going to be this width right here. So you could get those off the graph also if you didn't remember the two formulas. Now that we're done with this, let's go ahead now and complete the graph for this one. So first, we begin by plotting the center. The center is at 0, 0. The A value is 5. You always want to go in the direction that it opens up. So if you're here, 5 goes to the left and 5 goes to the right. So we're going to do that. We go 5 this way, make a dot. We go 5 that way, make a dot. It's, it's 5 in each direction because that's the A value. These on each end with the A value, those are your vertices. We can just go ahead and write those down here. The coordinates for those would be plus or minus 5 comma zero. That's the coordinates for our, our vertices. Now we still want to go up and down with our B value. We go up three, make a dot, and down three, make a dot. Now we don't have to indicate these points here, but we're going to use them as reference so that way we can draw our, our graph itself. So now we have this, and we have this part down below here. So therefore that's going to be our completed ellipse. 
Now, we also have to put on our C value. The C is four. So from this uh, vertex, we go to the left four and to the right four. And that's where our foci would be. So we're going to, from the center, we go to the left, our amount of C, C value was four. We go to the right C, and that uh, gives you the other ver uh, foci. So now we're going to indicate the points on that. That's going to be plus or minus four comma zero. We just read that directly off the picture. Now again, if you wanted to use the formulas, that'd be plus or minus C comma zero. You could most certainly do that as well. But now we've answered all the questions. Here's our graph again. The graph we know opens up sideways because a larger number was underneath the X.